Hallelujah. 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 Please can we move forward and be on our feet? While you tell someone good morning, welcome to church. Let's move forward and let's be on our feet and smile to someone. Tell them good morning, welcome to church. because you have brought us here we have not come here by ourselves we have not woken ourselves up it was not our alarm clocks that woke us up but it was your mercy that woke us up that brought us to church thank you for safety thank you for protection even as you brought each and every one of us here and we commit those that are still coming those that are still planning to come those that are even wondering if to come that you make certain put it in their hearts to show up in zion today and for those of us who are already here that will not miss the blessings in your presence today in jesus mighty name of prayed we open this service in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah saints in this house this morning can we lift our holy hands as we worship jesus say thank you father for all all not one all a million little miracles that i was able to wake up this morning can only be you oh we bless your name jesus don't expect us to raise a song be your own worship can we raise sounds in this building this morning Maratoni mama me good you are kind in all of your ways we have lost count we have lost count we cannot even count this anymore you've done too much so glad you found us word we can see we can tell and we know that is your grace all our days we will sing your praise oh, How far you brought Samuel? Ah, is able to I am so glad you found me worthy. Oh, I can see, I can tell, and I know that is your grace on my days. I will sing your praise. Oh, one who Elijah, Eli 
you receive my praise, oh Lord. Receive my praise. Receive my praise, oh Lord. I'm ever so excited to be in church this morning.
evermore. I'm 
Wherever you are, begin to speak in the language of the Spirit as the song goes on. As they keep singing, begin to speak in the language of the Spirit. Makota bala shanda bala kusende brakusta ya bala. Onyama ya bala. Begin to speak in the language of the Spirit. Mato brako sende brako shanda bala. Malabara send the Mara bada bo shandere bago dos kadabra, riba baba bo shakanda ragade, la bravo bo shakanda balados kadaba, ma brado shakaba. Hold your neighbor and begin to speak in tongues. Hold your neighbor, hold your neighbor, begin to speak in tongues. Ma kosata bada dodoska, wherever you are, hold your neighbor. Ma leba do shata bara dos, ma konde ba shande rege da 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 shka. E kala bara bada ba do shande rebe do sha. Ira bada ba do sha da ra da 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 do sha da ra. Ma ra ba do sha da 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 do sha da ra ba do sha. E ka ba da bo sha da ra ba do sha de bara do sha. Bara ko sha da bara do sha da bara ko sha. I ba da do sha. Ka ba do sha. Olorumi, olorumi. Ain't no duty more fear. He want me to go right to more fear. She left me. Holy the keyboard this. He want no reason. No one yet. That is the God we are talking about. Only this God could have done it. Ah, more Santa Baba. This is our call. Kaso to bantera anda skonda brada. Rabu shanta ya nada. As the song is going on, begin to thank God for all He has done for you. Begin to thank God. It is only God that could have done it for you. Open your mouth and thank this God. Oh Father, we thank you. Baba, da da kos katara. Baba, 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 shanda rokos kanderi da bosaba. Eblande brado bra, baba, 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 shaga de. I don't know if you have another God, but I don't have another one. We are no other God. We are no other God. Church, are you worshiping God this morning? Rock us up and let us go. We are no other God. Lord, 
That a donkey had to hear the word of the word of God for him. Many people are struggling in the hands of demons today for a simple reason that they don't hear the word of God. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 5 says something very important. Isaiah 50, verse 5 says, The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. For this reason, I have not been rebellious, and I have not turned away. Many have turned away because they don't hear. They have entered into the hands of traps and demons, and powers are using their life anyhow because they don't hear. It is a dangerous thing not to hear the word of God. That is why you are going to pray this morning. Just one prayer. Open my ears, O oh Lord. I must hear your voice. Open my ears, O oh Lord, that I must hear your voice. I must know your voice and I must hear your voice. Cry from the bottom of your heart. If you will sit down, sit down. If you will kneel down, kneel down. If you will shout, shout. If you will silently speak to God, do whatever you want. But say, God, open my ears, O oh God. Open my ears, oh God. Open my spiritual sensitivity to you. Open my ears, oh God. Many have been disgraced because they don't hear the voice of God. Many have been useless because they don't hear the voice of God. Father, my ear must be open. I know you speak. It is me that does not hear. Open down my ears, oh God. Open my ears, oh God. Mako shata palado sade ragados kanerabado shandara nanti anosa eke patalo sande regedo shantore mananos yada eke de balabo shanda balado eka balabo shanda balada eko tarenendo basunda riana kosanda ila makosende brago shanda bada open my ears oh Lord open my ears oh Lord. Karabada shandaya na dosa, seblago sandara manu sandaria, zika pato shandemalabo shandala. Open my ears, O Lord. Let me begin to hear you from today, clear and loud. Let my heart be receptive to your word. Open my ears, O God. Open my ears, O God. I refuse to be deaf anymore. Today ends deafness in my life in the name of Jesus. Open my ears, O oh Lord. Open my ears, O oh Lord. Open my ears, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The Bible talks about the fact that God touched the lips of Isaiah, and from that day his mouth was pure. Father, touch my ears. Put your hand in your ears. Touch my ears. Let me begin to hear you. Pray that prayer however you can pray it. Touch my ears, oh God. This has been my prayer since we started this topic. Lord, 
I noticed that even me, myself, I don't even hear like I should be hearing. Father, touch my ears. There are people hearing you. I want to be, I want my antenna should be so alive in you. Touch my ears, oh God. Open thou my ears that I may not be rebellious against your word, that I may not turn away from you. Touch my ears, oh God. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I decree in the name of Jesus that God will open our ears. I decree in the name of Jesus that from the word of God we'll begin to hear God. As we dig deep, we call unto deep. And the deep will respond to us. In the name of Jesus. As clear as the sound of my voice right now, so will the voice of God be unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. No one of us will be deaf to the word of God. No one of us will miss it. For this reason we will not be rebellious. And no one of us will turn away. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Today, by the grace of God, myself and the star girl here will be delivering a, a song to bless God. For those who don't know, we were both a year older last week. And we are still in that mood. So, yeah, the song says... Uh, Goodness and mercy of the Lord. That's the song.
was the cross meant for me that my Savior carry now have been made free by the mercy of God was the great meant for me where my sin laid buried now I stand redeemed by the mercy of God was the cross meant for me that my Savior carry now by the mercy of God was the great man for me that my sin lay buried now and redeemed by the mercy of God now I'm alive to tell the story of love overcome the goodness and mercy Power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom was the base of what I've done. Is the goodness and mercy the power of the blood? Ooh, goodness and mercy. of our testimonies. Let's put our hands together for the star girl and the star boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That was a good rendition. God bless you. Amen. Shall we just rise up as we worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Nelly <laughs> Gwe Ibu eze, ibu eze, nelua, ina chachi, ina chachi, nalamo.
and worship him this morning. The God who has brought you this far this year. The God who has made you an overcomer. The one who has made you and I overcome us. Go ahead, lift up your hand and bless his name. Worship this King of kings and the Lord of lords. Worship the great I am, the I am that I am. Worship the unchangeable changer. Worship the great provider. Worship our sustainer. Give him praise. Give him glory. Oh Lord, we give you praise. 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 We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We magnify your name. There is no one like you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you for loving us so, so much. Thank you for being there for us. The lover of our souls, our maker, the king of glory, the Lord of lords, bigger than the biggest, higher than the highest, greater than the greatest, older than the oldest, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We give you praise. We give you glory. The one who says that it comes to pass, we give you praise. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for what you have been doing in our lives and in our midst. Thank you for what you have been doing in your church. Thank you for the first service. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for counting us worthy to be able to stand before your mighty presence this morning. Thank you for how far you have helped us this year. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for fighting our battles for us. And thank you for making it possible for us to be among the living. Daddy, take all the glory. Take all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, Father, we go into your word. Send your word to us. Let us hear you clearly. Speak for your sons and your daughters hear it. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Please let me welcome someone near you. Just welcome them to church. Welcome to church. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Welcome to church. The Lord bless you today. The Lord bless your week. The Lord bless the remaining days of that you have this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our theme this month is hearing God. Hearing God. And we have established the fact that God speaks. And that God speaks to his people. And that if his children will listen, pay attention, they will hear God. Because God is speaking and he speaks. However, I also said, that God is not, is not a talkative. Praise the Lord. But he speaks. And why does he speak? Why does God speak? That is what we want to look at this morning. Thank God for the first service. Then we equally look at something that uh, related to that. Praise the Lord. Why does God speak? Praise God. You know, I've been to a couple of churches growing up. We didn't have any choice than to attend, I mean, to attend the church that our parents attended, of course. So, growing, growing up, attended the Baptist church, attended the Apostolic church, and each church has her own way of uh, order of service, you know. And uh, there are some churches, I won't mention names again, 
that you go to, um, everything is quiet, everything is peaceful, everything is just, and everything, uh, everyone sits down sanctimoniously, and as even sometimes when you want to sit down, you want to sit down in a holy manner, you don't want to rock any boats, and all of that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then, I've also attended the church whereby, even in the middle of service, somebody is running around the table, like this, and then they begin to speak. Yeah, they begin to speak, and, um, and all of that. I don't know if any of you have experienced that. Yes, I won't mention the name of church, because, um, praise the Lord. And we believe then that it was God talking to his people. Praise God. And I'm not condemning them. I'm not condemning them. Praise God. But we have now also, we also have, we have attended churches where every time, every now and then, God is talking. <laughs> God is talking. You know? I don't know if you ever attended any fellowship in school and all of that. My, my, my. You would tend to think that God is a talkative. Because everybody is coming with you. Know, God said this, God said this, God said this. I'm sure sisters will have encountered a lot of that. God says the Lord, you are my wife. And then you are wondering, ah, which God now? A whole lot of confusion everywhere. <laughs> because by the time three brothers are saying, God says the Lord. And then you two, you are even saying, which God then? Which God are you talking about? But the truth is this, God speaks. If you care to listen, God speaks. Praise God. And you see, what, one of the things I've just discovered that God wants to teach his children how to hear him. Because he also knows that a lot of people are hearing lies. And hearing other voices. Taking those voices to be his voice. But there are other voices that are speaking. There are some people we conduct deliverances for simply because they just keep hearing voices. And they can't sleep sometimes. The voice of God doesn't behave like that. Praise God. And so, God wants to teach us how he wants to teach us how to hear him how he speaks to us at least we can we can look at a few scriptures from the bible during the i think it was last tuesday or so that we we talked about how the boy the young boy samuel in the book of first samuel chapter three was taught how to hear god because growing up a time came in his life that god spoke and he couldn't recognize the voice of god And somehow he was taught how to respond to God when God spoke to him. And who taught him? It was Eli, the man of God, the prophet over his life then, taught him to do that. You remember? Several times, like three times, God called unto him. God called him, wanted to speak to him. He didn't know that it was God. He thought it was Eli. And so he ran to Eli. Thou callest me. And the man said, I didn't call you. Whereas it was God that wanted to talk to the young boy. But he didn't. Because he hadn't learned how to hear God. But when the prophet Samuel discovered. Pardon? When prophet Eli discerned or perceived, yes, that it was God that was speaking to this young boy. He told him, anytime he calls you again, tell him, speak, Lord, thy servant. Hear it. And from that time until he died, Samuel became someone who heard the voice of God without mistakes. However, I just said without mistake. That may be wrong. <laughs> 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 
Praise the Lord. Let me just put it that he began to hear the voice of the Lord clearly. Praise the Lord. But why I said, why I decided to retrace that thing that I said is because when he was going to anoint David, remember he made a mistake? That is to show us that the best of man is still man. When you say this fellow is a man of God, he's not God. He's man of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because some of us, we worship men. We don't worship God. We look at men as if they are God. They are not God. Though. No man is, a, is God. And any man can make a mistake. That's the truth. And that is what the example of Samuel. That's what it has just told us. That the best of man, the holiest of man, can still make mistakes. And so when they do, what do we do? We pray for them. Recognizing that they are still men. May the Lord help us. Let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 22. Let's, let's learn a few things from the life of Abraham. Genesis 22, I'll quickly read 1 to 20, what now? I'll read 1 to 14 or so. Praise God, quickly. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon, upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar, afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamp? For a burnt offering. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, they, they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said, to this day, in the month of the Lord, it shall be seen. May the Lord bless the reading 
of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, many of us are very familiar with the story of Abraham. But I believe that one of the things that God started with in the life of Abraham was to teach him how to hear him. I strongly believe that. Because if you look at the very beginning where you begin to read about Abraham, the first thing you will read in the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, is this. God had spoken to Abraham or called Abraham. Let's have a look at it. The Bible says, now the Lord had said, look at his pastors, right? The Lord has said unto Abraham. In other words, before this very particular chapter, before this time, there had been a conversation between Abraham and God. Maybe there was a little bit of delay. Maybe there was a little bit of agitation on the part of Abraham. Maybe there was a little bit of struggle. We don't know. Praise God. But the Lord had said to him, and Abraham heard God. Praise God. Abraham heard God. So, Hearing God for Abraham was right from the beginning. God settled that. And that is what God needs to settle in each of our lives. Amen? Amen. If you can hear God, then you can go far with God. If you can hear God, then you can go far with God. If you can hear God, then you can be led of God. Praise God. But to hear God, but to go far with the Lord, to walk with the Lord effectively and efficiently, three things are involved. Number one, you must hear him. What did I say? What did I say? Number two is faith. We cannot walk in without faith, right? We know. Without faith, we cannot, pro we cannot, we, we cannot please him. We know. Number three is obedience. Obedience. Sorry. How many things that list there? Number one, you must hear him. Number two, faith. Number three, obedience. And we find all these three in the life of Abraham. He could hear God. Abraham, in fact, we call him the father of faith. And Abraham was obedient. Because when God said to him, leave your father's house, what did he do? He carried his luggage and he left. And reading from that point, every time God spoke to Abraham, do this, he would do it. Do that, he would do it. No argument. He obeyed the last order. Every instruction that God gave to Abraham, he carried it out. The only time when he had some little problem, we had, along the line, he had some issues. Remember when he went? He was not supposed to carry too much luggage now. He carried a lot. And if you look at it, at a point, that was going to become a major problem in his life. Because there was a time when his servant, uh, with Lord's servants, they started fighting. And if you study his story, along that uh, at that time, around that time, God was not even speaking to him. Because there was strife. But the moment he told Lot, uh, when he got back to his senses, he said, separate thee yourself from me. He said it like that. Separate ye thyself from me. He went and showed him, look, choose, whichever you want. And Lot chose a very good place, green place. <laughs> he didn't know that. That green place that he was seeing led to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> that was where he chose. But there was peace. And God started again with Abraham. Praise the Lord. So Abraham had God. And like I said, when you hear God, 
life becomes a bit simple for you. May the Lord speak to us in, in Jesus' name. So from the life of Abraham also, we discovered this. That many times, yeah, though God speaks to us, he may not give us the total picture of what he wants to do in our lives. Praise God. And so God will want you to depend on him as you go. To pay attention, to be attentive and to open your ear to hear him for further instructions. Is there anyone here who knows what is going to happen to them in 20 years' time? Is there anyone who can say that? You have heard God. God has told you this is going to be the destination. Yes, God can even tell you the destination. But he may not tell you what is between the destination and where you are right now. He doesn't do it. You know why sometimes... So I think is, is that if he tells you, you may run away. He may lose you. If he tells me, no, if God had told me maybe like uh, 40 years ago, what, maybe some of the things I passed through, maybe I will have taken a, another decision. Praise God. But honestly, I do not regret where I am today to the glory of his name. So God may tell you, and that's why he always wants you, he wants, to, he wants you to hear him. Because God, this is how God deals with us. He speaks to you today, do this, do this. You take that step. He gives you another instruction, and you must hear him. And that's why we must listen. He gives you another instruction, and he's giving you instruction, and you are moving you are moving towards fulfilling destiny. Praise the Lord. This is very important. What we're, what we're, what we're talking about this morning is very important. Very, very important. When last did God speak to you? When last did he speak to you, you heard him and you took that step that he told you to, to take. We can read the story of Abraham. We can read it and talk about it and all of that. But when you look at what Abraham did, for example, the one we read today, Genesis chapter 22, God spoke, Abraham heard. And what did he hear? Take your son. Your son that you waited for for almost 100 years. Take him and go and offer him as a burnt offering unto me. If I were the one, maybe I would have concluded that I wasn't hearing correctly. Or maybe I would have said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> How can God, the same God that gave me this son, ask me to go and offer him to him? Is that God that wicked? You celebrated that God gave you a car. How can the same God tell you, that car, that car, go and give it or social thing, or social organization, or whatever. You will rebuke that voice. <laughs> Is it not true? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Some people say when they, are, when they want to raise offering and they are talking, and the Spirit of God is telling you that, 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 that one in this, you know, some people arrange their money according to denomination. Some people put the highest one here, the lowest they know where to put their hands, where they want to give offering. And on this particular day, God is saying, Oga, come. I want you to put your hand where you have the highest denomination and empty it like this. 
And I was like, eh? MG. It is at that moment, if the thing has a zip, it will zip it up. I said, no demon can take this off from me today. You know, sometimes we act like that. Like a child, you know, you know, children are very funny. You buy a biscuit, you give it to the child now. And the next moment, you say, ah, give me small. And the child is like this. And you are laughing. Look at this one. I bought this, thing. I can buy a carton for you. That is the same way God looks at us. It's the same way he looks at us. He looks at us and he's smiling. Look at this one. I am giving you an opportunity to give you a trailer load of biscuits. And you are hiding the one. The one that I'm asking you to give me. It's not that you can't hear or you are hearing, you know. It's a different thing if you can't hear. That's why I decided to say that there are things that we need to include. Obedience. You hear him, you have faith, and then you need to obey. Because of what use is it to hear God and not obey? It amounts to nothing. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody getting something to this morning? So I have said, it is when you take that step that God says, says you should take, that he gives you another instruction to the next step, the next step that you have to take. Hallelujah. Now, before we pray, Please, the story of Abraham that we read, imagine if Abraham could hear God from the beginning, but towards the end, he couldn't hear him. What would have happened? For example, Abraham could hear God say to him, take your child. He could hear God Carry knife, carry fire, carry everything. Go to Mount uh, Morea. Tie your son. And he could not hear the remaining. What would have happened? What would have happened? You know, he lifted up his hand, knife, to bring it down on the son's throat. Then God spoke. Imagine if. He could not hear God at that, at that point. What would have happened? Some of, them, some of us here have killed what we shouldn't kill. Because we couldn't hear God. And it's not the fault of God. Though. And some of us, it's because we, are, we go in and out. Comes in, comes out. Call them. We are not consistent. If we think deeply about the life of Abraham, you just discover that ah, what was going on in his mind when he was even, when he was tying the boy, when he, when he carried the knife, what was in his mind? Maybe if I were the one, if I were Abraham, because of the thought that I would be running in my mind, God would say, no, I don't want you offering again. I will carry your son and go. <laughs> because some people will be so bitter at that point. Even though they want to do it, but they will be but this man was just, ah, ah. what kind of a man was Abraham? He has so much faith. So much obedience. That the God who gave this son, even if he killed him, would do something. And indeed, what happened? God showed up. God showed up. But I want you to look at it. That entire story. What role did hearing God play? What role did he play? Great role. Don't you think so? Getting the instruction is... At least you have to get the instruction before you even carry, out, carry it out. 
or before you obey it. This week as you go, may you get instruction from God. Amen. And as you get the instruction, may God give you the grace to carry it out. Amen. In faith, in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is God telling you right now to do? Can you hear him? And after hearing him, are you ready to take that step? God may be saying to a sister or to even a brother, this route, this way you are going, that brother, that sister you want to marry, don't marry him, don't marry her. You are saying no. Because you know the sister has a car. The sister has a good house. And you have arranged the thing for yourself. Since me, I cannot afford a, a self-contained or two-bedroom or three-bedroom. And the sister, I will just pack everything, go to her house, and everything will be fine. And then we'll be happy thereafter. Have you heard of this age? <laughs> you, have, you have decided to package everything. And then you get there. You see another story. And you say, God! You say, God, they don't call my name You chose according to the manner of your sight and your wisdom. <laughs> May the Lord have mercy. Sister, you want to marry? Ask God. Hear God. And take step of faith. Thank you, sir. God bless you. So it's not just about hearing God alone. It's a total package. Hear God. Obey him. That's what we're talking about. And no one regrets ever, ever doing that. You will not regret yours. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The testimony I always, always give. I think Sister Dickness Bola referred to it. I, I, I said I encountered some robbers on Lagos Ibadu Express Road some years back. One instruction that God gave to me, number one, I didn't know why he did that, was that I should not go beyond 100 kilometers going. I did not know. As I just entered the car, don't go beyond 100. I didn't know. And I was just there and I was praising God. I was playing a song and I was praising and I was just going. And then not knowing that some people had barricaded the road. It was later I got to know why he said that. Because when I saw them, God, what next? I had turned. I knew that if I, had, if I was like on 140, to stop would take a while. So when God is saying something to you today, and it looks foolish, you are saying, God, you want to delay me? Don't you know that I have to get to Lagos at such a time? God knows. He knows that you have to get to Lagos alive. So if God is saying something today, know that he's God. He sees the end from the beginning. If he's saying, don't go this way, go this way, it is because he knows this way is the best for you. Choose this. Don't choose that. This may look better now. I have a, a senior, uh, a pastor, a senior pastor that we worked together some time ago. He said, he's still in the banking industry today and he has been there for many years. He said, he had opportunities along the line, being a banker, to move as his colleagues were moving, you know, opportunity. You move from one bank after two years. Boom, 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 boom. And then you're just moving and you're just moving. But he just had this, this instruction to just stay in certain places. Everything in, in, in a bank that he was in. And do you know what? After many of his colleagues have been retired and whether retrenched or whatever, he still there today. Still chopping the money. He's a director of one of the banks today. Praise the Lord. 
instruction. Obeying that instruction. God will help us. Amen. Brethren, don't let us be faster. The world will end in December. <laughs> Please. And so many people end their lives by going to places that, that they don't have business going to. In this assembly, we shall not lose anybody. Amen. We shall not bury anybody. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. God will order our steps. Amen. It shall be well with us. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. But you see, if you are not born again, what I'm talking about, you may not understand. The voice that you will be hearing will be the voice of a stranger, of the stranger. And God can start a walk in your life today. But let's bow, let's just bow our heads and brethren. If you are born again, just go ahead and pray to the Lord. Just, just pray. Just pray. go ahead and pray. You want to surrender your heart to Jesus. You want to say yes to his lordship. You want him to lead you. You want him to speak. You want to hear him. The same way Paul heard him. The same way other people who have gone ahead of us heard him. The same way men and women are hearing him right now. And there have been testimonies. You are here, you want to say yes to this God. Please raise up your right hand wherever you are. Anyone you want to surrender your life to Jesus. Don't be ashamed of anybody. You are in this hall. This moment. Go ahead. Just lift up your right hand. Let me see it. Just lift it up. Lift it up higher, higher, higher. Do that quickly, quickly. Don't be ashamed of anybody. It is between you and God. And a day must come that a man, a boy, a girl must yield to God. You want to yield to God today? You want to say, God, I am ready for you. God is always ready for us. Anyone like that? Lift up your right hand. Just signify. Lift up your right hand. You are leaving it out. God bless you, my sister. I can see that hand. I can see that hand. Please join me. I want to pray with you here. I want to pray with you. Don't be ashamed of anybody. We appreciate you for lifting your right hand. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Come, 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 come forward. You just come quickly. Male catalambratosa catalambratos. You want to begin to hear him. You want to begin to hear him. You want to start a relationship with him. Because you want him to direct your steps. Please come. Come forward. Don't worry. Come. Come. Close your eyes and pray. Tell him, Lord Jesus. Say after me, Lord. Say after me. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your children who have come out. Despising all shame. By the reason of this obedience this morning, turn their lives around. Oh, turn their lives around. In the name of Jesus, give each one of them a brand new beginning. In the name of Jesus, let them see your hand upon their lives. In the name of Jesus, as you speak, let them hear you. And the grace to obey you, give to them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will help you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Receive the help of God. Receive the help of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please stay there. We are going to pray together. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let this season, let this season, or let the remaining days of this year be my best days here, this year, this year. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the remaining days of this year be my best days in everything, in all areas. In the name of Jesus, the remaining battles left for me to fight. Fight, them. fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. Fight for me. In the name of Jesus. The kind of favor I've not been able to enjoy from the beginning of this year. In the remaining days of this year, let me enjoy them. Let me enjoy them. Let me enjoy them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, pray, Father, every pending promise, every pending issue, every pending thing that you still have for me this year, let them be delivered into my hands. I will not carry over any of my blessings. I will not carry over any of my miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, Father, help me greatly this week. Help me greatly this week. In my career, in my business, in my family, in my workplace. Help me, help me greatly. Please help me marvelously. Help me marvelously. Help me marvelously. In the name of Jesus. Yakata Kala Pradoka Satana. Go ahead of this week, oh God. Go ahead of me into this week. Make every crooked path straight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Lord, we ask as a church, please. In a special way, visit every family this week. Visit every member of this church this week. Even those who are listening to us online, visit them mightily. And Lord, cause our joy to be full. Perfect all that concerns us. Fight all our battles for us. In the name of Jesus, I soak every man, every woman in the blood of Jesus. Throughout this week, the blood of Jesus will speak for you. In the name of Jesus. And I declare and decree the Lord will help you marvelously. In the name of Jesus. You will not lack the help of God. I will not help, lack the help of God. In the name of Jesus. As you come back next during the week or next Sunday. You are coming with your testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you precious Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. All of us who are in front here, please go with my brother. He will just uh, encourage you the more. Uh, God bless you. If we are clapping for Jesus, can we clap better, better for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stretch forth our hands to Pastor and pray that you will continue to hear from God, that you will hear expressly from God. And that the grace to obey the instructions given by God, the Lord will give to him. Because we are heard today that as we obey one instruction, we are led to another. One obedience leads to another instruction. As we obey God, we will hear another instruction. Let's pray for him. That the grace to obey every instruction he will receive from God in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would help your son to obey every instruction. That as he obeys one instruction, you will lead him to another instruction. And that is how it will be for each one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want us to sit down, except your day is your first time in the sanctuary. If today is your first time, please, can you rise up on your feet so we can 
welcome you. If today is your first time, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Please, can we just welcome our brother? Let's welcome him. Yes, we love you with the love of a love. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you with the love of a love. We can see all over. Hey, glory of love. Yes, we love and 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 love
wait for second service because we're going to sit down together. And Pastor has said, we're going to have a family meeting. Yes. Is there any family here that you don't have family meetings? If you haven't been having family meetings in your family, begin to have family meetings. Because that might just be the reason why you're not connecting with yourselves in your family. Because everybody just goes their own way. Mommy goes, daddy goes, children go. They don't know what's going on. And that's the problem we are having in our world today. We are not connecting in our families. Okay, we've started connecting there, I can see. They've started the family meeting today. The family meeting is next week Sunday, not today. Eh? Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> so next week Sunday, we're going to have a family meeting. We're going to have our family dining and whining together. And so because of that, we're going to have a family choir. Is that okay? Yes. To have a family choir? Yes, we're going to have a family choir, a mass choir. Praise the Lord. We're going to have the mommies, the daddies, the children, the teenagers, the youth in one single choir. Hallelujah. So, choir, how are you going to help us with that? Praise the Lord. Since we're going to have a mass choir, that means it can't be just this choir. So I would even love to have a lot of the men that I'm seeing right now, yes. including those who are bending down. <laughs> and the women that I can see join the choir, make up uh, most part of the people that will form that choir. So please, immediately after the service, just with men, please. I know men are always busy. Men and women, let's quickly come. A choir director will quickly give us one song that we are all going to sing. Then I also want to say, please, it's not just for the members of this church alone. We can invite other families to join us on that Sunday. Let them come. Let them see how we do things in this family. Eh? Love is sharing. So we shall share. God bless you in Jesus' name. And praise the Lord. You know, some mommies have said to me, me, I don't know how to sing. Do you think I know how to sing? But I know how to sing to my God. Uh, yes. And that's what joyful noise is what we're going to do that day. I'm going to be part of that family choir. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm going to be part of that family choir. So if I can be part of that family choir, any one of you here can be part of so, And I mean that. <laughs> I'm sure they're already looking. So she sings that poorly, really. Uh -huh. God hears me when I sing. And he doesn't complain. Thank you. And he doesn't complain. Yes. I know he doesn't complain when I sing. Honestly. So next week Sunday. Ah, it's going to be beautiful. I'm really looking forward to it. So please. Yes. Hallelujah. Bro Jeff. Yes. We can say that. Hallelujah! This is a joyful church now. Yeah, let's give it. Hallelujah! Uh, we're rounding up. Pastor is doing me like this. Let's go. <laughs> but next week, oh, Pastor, you're not going to be doing us like this. Eh? Abby? Next week, there's no doing like no this. No rushing. Next week, we're going to have fun. Enjoy ourselves. Thank you. Uh, so next week, when you're coming, your dancing shoes. Don't wear all those boy, boy shoes oh, that you'll be able to dance because we're going to dance. Even after we have turned down the mic of service, we're going to turn on the mic of our dance eh? so please dj we're gonna have dj on that day on sunday yes hallelujah praise the lord <laughs> so next week sunday is the bomb it's gonna be the bomb yeah 
We're celebrating our own Christmas that day. Any Christmas celebration before our Christmas carol. Because we're still going to have a Christmas carol. So next week, Sunday, for our women, if we have an orange torch, we can wear it. If we have our sister's conference uniform, you can wear it. If you don't have it, any orange torch, whatever. And for our brothers, anything that will complement our orange. Even if it doesn't complement our orange, we can jam colors next week. No problems. Mm, variety is the spice of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So our medical checkup comes up every first Sunday of the month. So every first Sunday of the month, we can invite people to come get their medical checkup here. In the very small way we can do it, or before some people will come and say, ah, but they say we can come for a medical checkup. We want to do all the medical checks up. Oh, mm -mm. Okay, so on every first Sunday of the month, please let's invite people. Then our fellowship holds every Sunday. We could check. Please, can we display the addresses for the house fellowship so you can check the one that is nearest to your house and attend? Legons Province 24 will be having a one-week skill acquisition and empowerment program, and it's free, and it's coming up from tomorrow, 19 to the uh, 13 to the 19th of November at the province headquarters. This is to inform us that Caro rehearsals has commenced. If you are interested in joining for the rehearsals, you can join them. Yes, Caro rehearsals have started, and it's open to everyone. So the rehearsals are from Monday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. On Saturdays, they have two sessions, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Then Sundays after service from 12 noon to 3 p.m. You know, um, our Christmas carol has been, we have raised the bar of our Christmas carol and we're not going to drop it. We're going to even raise it higher. How many of us were at the Christmas carol last year? If you are here and you are here last year for Christmas carol, let me see your hands up. Oh, just a few of us. Oh, so you're going to see another beautiful session for Christmas Carol. And it's going to be on the 17th of December. So please, as you are planning to travel for Christmas, let it be after the 17th, okay? So we can all be here. Praise the Lord. So shall we just rise up on our feet? Offering. Oh, we haven't given our offering. I'm so sorry. Offering and tithe. Hey! No wonder. Pastor was looking at me like, eh, this woman. <laughs> so we're going to take our tithe. If you have your tithe here, please, can you dance to the front so we quickly take our tithe. And as you package your offering too, because as we take our tithe, we just go into our offering. So if you are here, you want to give your tithe, please, can you dance to the front? Yes. You are good. You are good. And if you have given your you are good. tithe during the week, online, Jesus. you can also come every and we'll time. pray for you. Yes. Every day. You, you are good. Jesus. You are the same. You are good. Say you are good. You are good. Yes, you are. You are good. Holy Spirit. We thank you for your children who have obeyed and have their paid their tithe. We pray, O oh God, that the blessings that you have promised for people who obey this instruction will be their portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, that you will open the windows of heaven and you pour them a blessing that they will not have enough room to receive in Jesus' name. You will rebuke the devourers for their sake and you make them delight some lands in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So please shall we rise up with our offerings and give our offerings to the Lord. Dancing. You are good, Lord, you are good. You are good, Jesus. Every day, every heart. You are good, Jesus. Somebody say. You are good. Yes. You are good. Papa, 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 Papa,
mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we all just rise up and raise our hands to the most high God and thank him for this wonderful service. Let's just give God praise. Let's God give praise. We thank you for such joy in your presence, oh God. No wonder the Bible says in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures evermore. And so Lord we are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful to be called the children of the Most High God, we're grateful to have such joy and good time in your presence, Lord, we're grateful. We do not take it for granted, oh God, that you were here with us, and we are grateful. We return all the glory to you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the time of worship. Thank you for the time of praise. Lord God, we are just so, so grateful that we're called the children of the Most High God. We are grateful. Oh, Lord, we just wonder how heaven will look like, where there will be no closure, there will be, we wouldn't have to go home, but we just be praising you. Lord, we're looking forward to it, and we pray, Lord, that none of us will miss it. None of us will miss it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon Amen. you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. This week will be a wonderful week. Amen. It will be a glorious week. Amen. It will be a fruitful week. Amen. It will be a blessed week. Then you will hear God this week. Amen. You will hear him. Amen. You will obey him Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This week will be the best week yet in the name of Jesus. Amen. And when you come back again next week, it will be with testimonies. Amen. We're grateful, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Okay, then there's cake. Our brother, it was his birthday during the week. And so he has brought cake for everybody. So please don't rush home. There's cake. God bless you. Shall we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall be a man of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.